Well, hello 1P and welcome to your last lesson about linear relations um, before we move on to some other topics. Uh, we're talking today about two linear relations all at once. Ooh, not too scary though. I can compare a pair of linear relations using their graphs and equations. So we're looking at two linear relations. <clears throat> Sometime, sometimes, need an S in there. Uh, you need to compare two linear situations and it helps to put the two lines on the same graph and have a look at what it tells you. So for example one, uh, data about the total monthly cost to rent video games. Okay, so we're renting video games in this example. Uh, from two online game sites are shown on the graph below. Analyze the situation and then answer the multiple choice question. I just lost my pen. Hold on. There, that's better. <clears throat> okay, so what we've got here, we've got two video game companies. Uh, it looks like we've got Mighty Gamers and Sir Game A Lot. Now, what does this graph tell us if we're going to take a look at it? Along the bottom, we have the number of games rented, and up the side, we have the total cost, the total monthly cost. So let's have a look at what's going on here. Uh, Sir Game A Lot is flatlined. <clears throat> okay. They, you pay $30 a month and you can rent as many games as you want. Mighty Gamers, looks like you pay $15 a month to start with if you're buying, if you're renting no games at all. So that's an upfront fee. And then you pay something per video game. Now we could actually figure out what that something is if we drew our little triangle in there and found out what our rate of change is. Let's actually do that. Each one of these little spaces or two spaces is five. So we've got two spaces here which is five and along the bottom two spaces is two. So it looks like when I rent two games my cost goes up five dollars. So if I rent two games and my cost goes up five dollars that means I must do five divided by two equals two dollars and fifty cents per game. That's our rate of change. So I can analyze that if I want to. I honestly don't really need to do that because we're just going to answer, answer this multiple choice question. Uh, what else do we know about this kind of thing? Well, we know that Sir Games A Lot, if you want to rent a lot of games, like if you're going to rent um, a whole bunch of games, that's definitely the one you want because the Mighty Gamer starts to get more expensive. It gets up higher than Sir Games A Lot after this point, right? After this point, uh, it's so much better to have Sir Games A Lot because Mighty Gamers is getting mighty expensive. Um, before that point, it would have been better to have a uh, the Mighty Gamers one because it would have been cheaper. We've got less money down in this area of the graph. Um, so what is that point? That point is six games. So at six games, there's something interesting happening here. At six games, um, it doesn't matter who you rent from because it's going to cost $30 no matter where you are. Okay, let's have a look at the multiple choice questions now. It says, which of the following statements is true? It costs more to rent from Sir Game A Lot after six games. So after six games, no, Sir Game A Lot's much cheaper after six games, so that is out of the question. It costs less to rent from Mighty Gamers after 30 games. Well, this graph tells us nothing about 30 games, so I'm going to say that's off limits too. It costs the same amount to rent six games from the two sites. Oh, that's just what we said here. From the two sites, it doesn't matter whether you're on the Mighty Gamers line or the Sir Games A Lot line. It costs $30 at six games. So I think that's it. But let's have a look at the last one just in case. It costs the same amount to rent 30 games from the two sites. No, 30 games would be way, way over here. So this is $30. Okay, so it costs $30 to rent six games, so that one's out of the question. So this is the one for the two sites, it costs the same amount. Okay, now let's have a look at a different situation that involves two linear equations. Now, this is taken out of your textbook, although I've changed the names because I couldn't pronounce the one name in the textbook. Um, example two, Kira and Zachary are junior speed skaters. 
Kira skates at an average speed of 10 meters per second, and Zachary skates at an average speed of 9 meters per second. Kira and Zachary have a 1500 meter race where Zachary has a head start of 100 meters. Who wins the race and how do you know? Okay, so we're going to create a table of values. Here's what we're doing. Um, I've got time and I hope I have enough time here, but even if I don't, we'll leave some extra room here so that maybe it'll get to that 1500 meter mark. Um, we know that Kira skates at 10 meters per second. So Kira's going at 10 meters per second, so how far does she go in 50 seconds? Why did I ask that question? Well, here's the reason I asked that question. It's because down here, I jump by 50 seconds. So if I know how far Kira goes every 50 seconds, then I, that is going to be my change in her, uh, in her chart. So how far does Kira go in 50 seconds? Well, she goes 50, not 50, she goes 10 meters per second. And in 50 seconds, we're going to multiply that by 5. So she actually goes 50 meters in 50 seconds. <laughs> or sorry, multiply that by 5. 50 seconds. She goes 500 meters in 50 seconds. Uh, how about Zachary? Zachary goes 9 meters per second. So every second he goes 9 meters. So in 50 seconds, I got to multiply that by 50. And that's going to be 450 meters in 50 seconds. So let's fill this out. I know from 0 to 50, Kira is going to go from 0 to 500. And then she's going to go another 500. She's, so she's going to get to 1,000. And then she's going to get to 1,500. And 2,000, and now the race is over, but I can keep going, 2,500 and 3,000. Now I got to be a little careful with Zachary because he has a beginning speed a beginning uh, point. He had a head start of 100 meters before Kira started moving, uh, and then every 50 seconds he's going to go 450. So I have to add this 450 on top of that 100. So at 550, so at 50 seconds he's still ahead of her, uh, and then I have to add another 450, which is going to take me to a thousand. So it looks like they're tied right there. And then after that, it's going to go 1450 and so on and so forth. And I'm not even going to finish in, finish filling in the table. I can look at the table and I can see um, who's going to win the race because at 100 meters, they're tied. And then Kira pulls ahead to win at 1500 meters. So I can see that from the table. But I'm going to do the graph just to be on the safe side. Okay, now here's my graph. Now I'm going to graph these two things on with different colors. Um, now notice, and you've got to be careful with this with your scale. The scale has to go up in even spacing. And since they both start, or since one of these actually starts at zero, I need to start both my time and my distance at zero. So I've made the time along the bottom. Each one of these is 25, because I've got four spaces for every 100. And up the side, um, two spaces is 200. So one space must be 100. Okay, so 0, 0, we're going to put Kira on first. So there's my 0, 0. Uh, and then at 50, I've got 500. So at 50, this is my 50 mark, I go up to 500 and I put a dot. Now I'm going to let you in on a little secret here. You don't need all of the dots on the line. You only need kind of a beginning point and an end point. So if we had put uh, two dots on here, um, at a time of 300, she's at 300 meters. That won't actually fit on here. So at, uh, at a time of 150, she's at 1500. So let's go to 150 right here and go up to 1500 right there. Uh, and I'm not going to bother putting the middle ones on there. I'm just going to draw my line from there. Now, I've put on Zachary's here, too, in blue, and it's it's really hard to see this. So I'm thinking I should have spread this out more. I shouldn't have had every four spaces be 100. I should have maybe had more than that. So I spread this out because I don't even need to go past, like, 200. This is all extra space. And so I'm going to quickly change that. 
Okay, there now you can see both lines on there a little bit better now that I've changed the scale to spread it out a little bit more. And you can see that here's where they're neck and neck. That's where uh, Kira passes Zachary because he had a head start. So she passes him here at 100 seconds in 1,000 meters. Um, so we can write that 100 comma 1,000. That point's significant. And then the race kind of ends here. So I don't even need this. Like it ends at 1,500 meters right there. So anything above that 1500 um, is not part of the race. So I'm going to get rid of that because the race ends at 1500 meters. And you can tell on here, if you're looking at the time, Kira gets there ahead. So Kira wins the race. Say Kira wins. Yay. Now what's it say here? It says, what if the race was only 500 meters long? Well, if the race was only 500 meters long, we're talking about this line right here. And at 500 meters, Zachary was still ahead. So if the race was only 500 meters long, Zach would win. Zach would win. And then the next question I say, but what if it was 1,000 meters long? Well, if it was 1,000 meters long, we're talking about that point there, this one, right there. And it would be a tie. And say they would tie. Okay, so our next one here, Diana and Kim are sisters. One morning Diana left for school ahead of Kim walking at 60 meters per minute. Kim left home when Diana had already traveled 80, 800 meters. The school is 2.2 kilometers away from their house. Can Kim catch up to Diana before she gets to school if she jogs at 100 meters per minute? So I'd like you to try and graph this before you watch the rest of the video. So I'd like to give I'd like you to give this a try. You might want to even shut the iPad off. Take note of where this is. This is at like 12 minutes and 10 seconds. And I want you to give this a try and then come back and I'm going to sort of talk you through it. Um, so right now I'm actually just going to go through and do the time and the distance for all of this and then I'll talk to you about it and tell you how I did it all. Uh, but I want you to go and try it first. So we're going to make time zero when Kim leaves home. So Kim leaves home at time zero and Diana is already 800 meters distance away. Now we have to figure out how much we're going to go up by. So my time, I'm going to make it easy and say we're going to go up in um, uh, 10 minute intervals. Now in 10 minutes Diana is walking at 60 meters per minute. So in 10 minutes she's going to walk 600 meters because 60 meters per minute times 10 and this isn't writing it's just going to go all up here in just a second I hope um, is going to give us 600 uh, meters. 60 meters per minute times 10, oop, I don't know what that is, times 10 equals 600. Okay, so every 10 we're going to go up 600, so I'm going to fill that in. And so what I filled in here, I'm going up by 600 meters every time, because every 10 minute intervals of time, Diana walks 600 meters. Now, what about Kim? Kim left home when Diana had already traveled 60. The school is 2.2 kilometers from their house. Can Kim catch up to Diana before she gets... Okay, she's jogging at 100 meters per minute. So at if she's going 100 meters per minute, then in 10 minutes she's going to go 1,000 meters. So she's going to go 1,000 meters uh, for the first 10 minutes and 2,000 for the... So now we have to know that after about here, this really doesn't make any sense because they've gone way past the school. The school is 2.2 kilometers away and 2.2 kilometers is 2200, so 2200, 2200 meters. Um, so these are way past the school. So now I'm going to put them on the graph. 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put these on the graph. Now I'm going to start with Diana. I'm going to do Diana in red. And she starts at 800 meters, which is going, each one of these is 100. So she starts at 500, 6, 7, 800. So she starts at 800 meters, and then at 30 minutes she's at 26. So I can't really use that, so I'm going to use the 20 minutes she's at 2,000. So at 20 minutes she's at 2,000, so I'm going to go up, and I'm going to draw a line. And now there, I put on uh, Kim's two. Kim is in green. And notice that where they meet, they meet at 2,000 meters. And since the school isn't until 2,200 meters, it was at 2.2 kilometers, um, they actually do meet right before they get to the school. Okay, so we say they meet, they meet, at two kilometers um, only uh, 0.2 kilometers 0 0.2 kilometers or 200 meters from the school. So she does catch up to her but it takes her a while and um, that concludes this video.